Continue, yeah, uh, so uh, my role really would be just to show you some practice patterns in different areas uh, in the world. The previous speakers really just uh, uh, talked about uh, extensively the how to prevent endophthalmitis. So I'm going to skip quite fast uh, regarding this topic just to show you that uh, in one of the important studies, one of the risk factors is really the use of the proper antibiotic to address the possible organisms that would cause infection. And these are really just the requirements and the qualities of an ideal antibiotic. And we're really talking about the new generation fluoroquinolones, which are shown in this slide. Um, the, the risk factors really have, and the studies that are out there have shown that uh, the new generation fluoroquinolones are superior to the early generation fluoroquinolones because of their more active status and the way they are able to be bactericidal to most endothelmitis causing organisms. And so uh, based on all the studies in the world, I realize that here in India there are some restrictions as to how uh, prophylaxis can be achieved uh, in endothelmitis, but this is what we do back home. And these are also based on such certain studies. One, for example, is by Dr. Basavada. We've really done away with applying topical antibiotics three days before the surgery. And because uh, AQS levels have been achieved adequately with applying antibiotics just two hours before the surgery topically, every 15 minutes for four doses, then that's what we do. But you have to realize that uh, the adequate uh, antibiotic levels and in the anterior chamber when you start surgery doesn't really do much when, you, when the organisms you leave behind at the end of the surgery. So you really have to give something as a prophylaxis right after the surgery or right after the, the operation. So this is what we do back home. Uh, so it's, it's, we, do, we do apply topical antibiotics five minutes for five doses, one hour before surgery. And this has been adopted as a surgical prophylaxis guideline of 2013 in the United States. Uh, we, we try to avoid giving uh, prolonged antibiotics several days before the surgery because they can, do, they can cause uh, bacterial selection. And you may end up with a very resistant uh, bacteria that you've selected before the surgery that would cause endophthalmitis. So during the surgery, uh, we, we are pay attention to all the, the preventive measures to prevent infection, uh, asepsis, antisepsis, draping, but uh, uh, we have adapted the use of intracameral antibiotics uh, since 2006. Uh, the landmark study, of course, is the ESCRS, and we all know this, and we, we published our own findings as far as safety with an intracameral uh, moxifloxacin back in 2007, and we've made this a routine uh, pra practice in our, in our, uh, in our surgeries. Uh, we've recently also done studies with levofloxacin, and they be, we've shown that they're safe to inject intracamerally with 0.1 cc, which, in, which uh, contains about 500 micrograms of the uh, rivofloxacin. We've done, we did the uh, OCT of the macula and showed no uh, toxic effects as far as, and uh, AC reactions as well, cor corneal studies, endothelium, no, no problems there. So po post-operatively, I think this is pretty standard. We start antibiotics two hours after the surgical procedure give them every two hours during the first day of the surgery. We see the patients the next day, which is very important because we want to catch any problems uh, right away and, and, and be more aggressive if needed. So uh, we see the patients the next day. If everything is fine, we bring them down to four times a day as far as antibiotics, topical steroids, and NSAIDs. We see them one week later to make sure, and then at the three or four weeks period, when everything is fine and the wound is very well healed and the patients can re resume full activity. Um, I just want to point out, I think, is uh, this particular study and, and survey by JSCRS, which differs from the initial 2007 survey to, the, to what was done uh, in 2015. So what, what is shown here that most of the uh, prophylactic regimen have have been more or less the same, but it, the difference is the intracaramel antibiotics, where, where intracaramel injected antibiotics have gained in popularity and acceptance in, in the United States. And the preferred uh, delivery or route is really intracaramel injection instead of uh, uh, diluting the solution or the antibiotics in the irrigating solution. So I guess uh, for time, because of time constraints, then I think that would be the take home message here. I, uh, restrictions, regulatory restrictions uh, aside, 
uh, this has been gaining popularity as far as prophylaxis, which means uh, intracaramel injections. Thank you.